says, yes, 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 yes. Let's go. The cold hard truth is that in life, sensitive men will always lose. And I'm saying this as a guy who used to be as soft and as passive as they come, constantly losing out on women and opportunities to these cold hearted men who just don't hesitate. And that is why today we're gonna look at three critical things I did to finally become cold hearted myself. Number one, kill the vampires. So it was about 10 years ago when I was 24 years old that I finally made the decision, I want to change my life. I was sick and tired of living in constant fear, afraid to talk to girls, afraid to talk to guys who seemed more successful than me, afraid to try and do anything. And that's when I started going to the gym every day. I started forcing myself to approach women. I quit my software job and started trying to build my own personal training business. And it felt good. It felt like I was finally on the right path and the momentum was rapidly building. But then something happened. I was at an old family reunion with my extended family and I was talking to some of my cousins and aunts and uncles and there was this dynamic that was established back when I was this afraid passive boy that, that was still in place when I was talking to these people. You know what I'm talking about? Just this kind of, not condescending, but this almost like I feel bad for you tone that, that they would talk to me with. Like, oh, little David, well, we see you still don't have a girlfriend yet, huh? And that made me question myself and be like, fuck man. Am I actually improving or is this the, the weak, afraid person that I always have to be? Anyway, then I went back home, got back on the grinds, built myself back up, got in a good groove again. Then I was filming this YouTube video, approaching girls on the street back on the Boston University campus where I went to school. Keep in mind, when I was in university, I felt like a loser. Like I was afraid. I did not take opportunities with girls unless I was drunk at a frat party. I felt like a piece of shit. And even though I showed up to film that video with confidence, as soon as I got rejected by one girl immediately again, I questioned myself and felt like, fuck, am I just faking it? Maybe that is who I'm meant to be. Maybe that is all I'll ever be. So if you're on this journey right now trying to change your life, you have to be aware of the energy vampires. These environments or these people from your past who still see you as the weak little boy. And when you're in the critical stages of growth, your first two or three years on this journey, avoid those things at all costs. I don't care if you have to skip your next Thanksgiving or Christmas holiday with your family. If your aunts and uncles or these people who are there are gonna make you feel like a piece of shit, why do it? Is it really worth risking all the momentum you've built up? Just because your old buddies ask you to go out and get drunk or come over and get high and play video games, say no. Those are energy vampires, bro. They're not trying to do you bad, but objectively, they're going to be bad for you. When you're fighting for that fucking momentum, you have to protect it at all costs. Now, something else that every man should be protecting at all costs is making sure that he, that he stays looking sexy at all times, especially with Valentine's Day around the corner, which is why I decided to partner with Manscaped to be the sponsor of today's video. It all starts with the Lawnmower 5.0. I use this twice per week to trim the hair on my chest and abs because if you're like me and you're putting in work in the gym but you still have a bunch of hairs, it's gonna cover up your gains. And this guy right here, take a look. I left a few untrimmed hairs here on my, on my chest to show you. Look how effortlessly this thing shreds through the hairs. It's got built-in skin safe technology so it cuts down right to the skin without leaving any nicks or ingrown hairs. There's no competition on the market. Then we got this guy, the Beard Hedger Pro. This is the secrets to, to my jawline and to keeping my beard on point. Every other day I'm going to take this with, with no guard on it and I'm going to trim right here down below. That line right there all the way around because that's what brings out the jawline. Now we have this contrast between the light beard and the clean skin. Then once a week I'll throw on the guard. I'll set it to number seven down here. Then I'll use this just to keep the overall beard length exactly how I want it. And because Manscaped is sponsoring the video, you know that they're hooking us up with the coupon code that's gonna get you 20% off your order plus free shipping worldwide. Just click that first link in description to take your grooming game to the next level. Number two, your primary concern. So there's this one aspect of human nature, I'm sure you're familiar with it. At all times, we have like a primary concern inside of our minds, like the one thing that, that we're a bit worried or excited about, and no matter what we're doing or thinking about, it, it kind of just lives in your head rent free. So a lot of times this might be uncertainty in your relationship. If you feel like you don't really know where you stand with the girl you're dating or you don't fully trust her, that's probably gonna be your primary concern. Or maybe there's something coming up that you have to do that's scary. Like next week you have a meeting with your boss and you wanna ask him for a raise. Or you know you're gonna see this really attractive girl at the gym and you know you should approach her and ask her out finally. Like no matter what you're doing, you probably keep thinking, fuck, how am I gonna do this shit? Oh, what am I gonna do? Or maybe it's your financial situation or your job security. 
Like that can be something that is constantly eating away at your peace of mind. Now, I want to ask you, normally, what does this primary concern do for you? I know for me, it's basically going to distract me from whatever I'm doing. It's going to make me feel a bit more anxious and on edge. Maybe I start to like snap back at other people who are talking to me because I'm just I'm pissed off about this thing. Like it kind of just makes me perform worse at every other part of my life. So now let me ask you, what is the number one thing that you want to go after right now? Maybe you really want to start a side hustle and start making extra cash each month. Or you really want to start meeting more women and actually creating opportunities with attractive girls. Or maybe you want to finally stay consistent with your diet and gym routine and actually change your body. The idea here is that you make this thing your new primary concern. Like, this is how I've trained myself to be a fucking machine and I've started, you know, five plus successful businesses while still building up this YouTube channel. I am constantly obsessing over the next thing I have to get done for my primary concern. I can't stop thinking about it. All right, I gotta film a YouTube video tomorrow. What can I do to make this the fucking dopest YouTube video ever? And all day I'm just thinking about it and coming up with ideas. Well, for the past few months, we were putting together Beast Nation and all I could think about is how do we make this a fucking game changer for every guy who joins this and make this just the, the dopest community for motivated men out there. Oh, you know, maybe we could do this, this map feature where they can find guys near them so they, so they can find a, a gym buddy or a wingman. Fuck yeah, let's do that. Nah, this is a lot easier said than done because if you just tell yourself, okay, I just need to be really worried about this new side hustle, it's probably not gonna work. You're probably still gonna keep worrying about whatever shit you were worrying about before. So what you have to do is attach more pain to the new primary concern. You have to make it more painful that you don't do that thing. And the way you do this is by closing your eyes and imagining, okay, if I don't change anything about this, how is it negatively gonna affect my life over the next six months? If you wanna change your financial situation, you have to close your eyes and think, if I don't do anything to improve this, how is my life gonna look in six months? Well, I'm still gonna be stressed out, I'm not going to be able to pay for dates with girls. That's going to you know, limit my ability to, to meet new women. I'm still living at my parents' house, maybe. I'm going to be stressed all the time. Fuck, that's going to suck. And then think, how is it going to make your life look in three years? Now you're going to be like, damn, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have missed out on three years of meeting girls because I've been living like a piece of shit, feeling like a low-value guy because I haven't increased my finances. And just keep thinking like this. Keep thinking how shitty your life's going to be if this thing's not handled. And now it's automatically going to become your primary concern because you're going to genuinely be concerned. Fuck, I got to get started on this now or I'm going to be screwed. Now, something that all of us need to be concerned about at this very moment is the new Edge collection that drops on Thursday. That's right, we're finally dropping the new corduroy jacket. This is a perfect top layer that adds that extra bit of masculine style to any outfit. The Essential T, just the best fitting casual t-shirt out there is coming back in stock. Our active chinos, which are straight up the best stylish pants out there for men, are coming out in a new olive green colorway that is just sick. And the enhanced mesh tank top is finally back, just the sickest gym tank that makes you look like a beast. All of that and more is dropping on Thursday. You can click the second link down in description to get early access and shop the new collection before everyone else so nothing sells out on you. Number three, do what makes you happy and tell no one. So right now, I imagine that you're grinding hard. You're grinding in the gym, you're grinding your money, you're grinding in your dating life. And as you experience wins, it's gonna be natural to want to share these things with other people, to share your progress. Like, damn, bro, I can see my six pack now. Everybody's gotta know about this. I started my own business. I'm actually making money for myself. I gotta tell the world. I'm actually going on dates with attractive women. This is dope. Don't do it, bro. Don't share the wins. Don't share the wins with anyone except your inner circle of masculine brothers who are actually on the same path as you. Sharing it with them is powerful. It's gonna motivate them to, to also keep leveling up. That's productive. But otherwise, the mindset needs to be, I'm gonna let other people realize for themselves. I'm not gonna tell them shit. Honestly, this has been a complete game changer for me. When I'm meeting someone new, or there's someone who I casually know through the gym or through a friend of a friend, I will never, ever, ever share anything that I'm proud of or my wins with these people. If they ask about it, sure, but otherwise I'm not gonna tell them about my 1.5 million YouTube subscribers and all of my different businesses that I'm making money. And this is something I started doing early on my journey, by the way, this is not a new thing, because what I realized is when I stopped telling people, all of a sudden I rewired my brain to start taking action and wanting to level up for my own sense of growth. Like that's what allowed me to self-validate and create this powerful, positive feedback loop that I was fully in control of. When I uploaded a new video, it made me proud because I did it, not because other people could see it. When I hit a new PR in the gym, I was proud of myself. I didn't have to share that with anyone else. And if you can start to do this, it's game over, bro, because now you don't need anything outside of yourself to keep taking action. 
and you're on the path, you're going to win now. Plus, when you tell other people about your plans or all these things that you got going on, guess what happens? You get this little dopamine hit because you tell them something you're proud of. And in your head, you're like, they know I'm a winner now. And then you get this little dopamine hit. And now you're actually less motivated to keep putting in work and making things happen because you're already reaping the rewards. And you're also training yourself to level up for validation from other people. From now on, you keep your wins to yourself. That's for you to know and for them to find out. Now, right now, if you are working to level up your finances, then you need to watch this video next. It is about five things poor men do that rich men do not. Click there to watch that now and find out the five things. If you're new to the channel, click down there to subscribe because I release two new videos every single week and you don't want to miss them. I'll talk to you in the next video. Stay beastly.